Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Triple N Talk Show. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. We are delighted you could join us. These programs are being video streamed to YouTube and Google Plus. Uh, talking about YouTube, we would like you to visit our YouTube channel, which is uh, Nick Nickham, where we have more than 800 videos accenting our Indian experience uh, here in the United States. Uh, we'd also like you to visit our Google Plus account, which is Nick Nickham, and, and please do like and subscribe to our YouTube channels. We also have a Facebook page, which is Nick Nickham Network, where we keep you abreast of what's happening in and around the Houston area and from around the globe. And today we are going to be talking about the history of yoga. More than 6,000 years of history of yoga and my special guests are R Ramji Om and next to him is uh, Deepika Kothari. Uh, welcome to uh, Triple N Talk Show. We're delighted to have you. They are from the Vishuddhi uh, Film uh, Institute and uh, they are uh, here in Houston uh, promoting their uh, nationally, internationally acclaimed uh, uh, documentary which is uh, History of Yoga. Welcome to Triple N Talk Show again and uh, let's start off with a little bit about your background, each of you. <laughs> okay, uh, I am uh, Deepika Kothari. Uh, my, uh, my subject uh, field is physics. I have done my doctorate in physics from Delhi University and uh, then I was always interested that uh, science has a limitation I realized uh, studying science from right from my childhood and I thought there is something beyond that because I was exposed to uh, the Upanishads, the wisdom of Gita and other things so uh, there was always an interest uh, what lies in these ancient Indian texts and how we can understand from a scientific point of view. So uh, this was the interest that took me to study uh, all these ancient scriptures. And also um, uh, then we, I came in contact with Ramji. Uh, now uh, we thought he is an ardent practitioner of yoga since his yeah. childhood days. And uh, he's been also uh, studying uh, the scriptures, the history yeah. and philosophy and all that. So we thought uh, let's uh, make yeah. a film. So, so I'm uh, Ramji Om and uh, by profession I'm a bureaucrat in government of India. But Are you allowed to say that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You said bureaucrat? No, no, don't, don't say civil servant. <laughs> I'm a civil servant. I'm just joking. No. I mean, you can, this is America. You this can say whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, Freedom yeah, of speech. That's uh, <laughs> the first right we have in this country. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, so, you can call me a bureau, bureaucrat by profession. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a civil servant of 1995 uh, civil services of India batch and right from my uh, childhood days I used to uh, study and I used to learn yoga through our traditional uh, yeah. masters mm -hmm. that is how I came into this field and when I moved to bigger city then I was exposed to this new kind of yoga <laughs> so that was quite different yeah so um, I decided to uh, do more research over it and the, then Dr. Deepika Kothari inspired me to yeah. um, uh, document this I see, because yeah. um, and we decided both of us decided to do the documentation digitally visually because our we found that our visuals are more powerful than words the visuals the sculptures the symbols so and there was a vacuum basically yeah. Because that, this is the first documentation of history of yoga. I see. Yeah. 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 So that is how we yeah. got into it. But that's yeah. fascinating, uh, Deepika. What got you interested in uh, going from physics to archaeology, <laughs> or or looking into six thousand years of uh, uh, ancient Indian history uh, for traces of yoga? <laughs> oh well, uh, it's uh, it was very much in the <laughs> family, I can say. Uh, Indian families are very traditional families, so uh, you learn a lot from your parents and grandparents, that's the tradition. Mm. So uh, my grandfather was the uh, first scientific advisor of the country, yeah. India, and uh, so uh, he had uh, many people visiting him and he also had uh, gone to study outside, so he has many uh, people, Nobel laureates and all used to come to our house. And here, these scientists uh, of the world uh, were discussing science, higher science, and at the same time, they would also discuss uh, Sri Aurobindo's writings or Gita and Upanishads and all these things. Mm. So, 
I thought there is something in it uh, which relates the science, the, the modern science, and uh, these uh, are ancient signs. So there has to be some, if not connection, then there, there is some, uh, something we, we can learn from each, each of these uh, very powerful uh, fields of uh, knowledge systems and uh, maybe uh, for the betterment of humanity, there is more to look into. And archaeology and uh, searching for all this is, my training in research was, I think, uh, very good indeed. It's all because of my teachers. Yeah. And uh, so when I got into this subject, I thought, let's really search for it and uh, get authentic uh, data so that the world knows uh, uh, where it is and the right references and all we want to document in a very authentic manner. So the scholarly world also accepts this. Uh, at the same time, uh, general masses also get to enjoy uh, their legacy and heritage. So that was that, that, That's fascinating. I am also a student of science. Uh, I, I should say cardiologist or in other words, I fix broken hearts. Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, you know, even though I've been like 8,000 miles from Mysore, Karnataka, <laughs> India, no. <laughs> uh, I've been very deeply involved with like Ramayana, Ramlila, and Bhagavad yeah. Gita. In fact, I've translated the entire 700 shlokas of Bhagavad Gita into wow. English. It's, it's an audio Wonderful. on YouTube. Uh, what is fascinating to me is the, the, all our Indian scriptures, which are 10,000 years old, mm -hmm. have already laid down all the foundation of yeah. what life mm -hmm. is and what life guidelines are, all these things. Mm -hmm. In your research, uh, how far back does this yoga go? And we are talking about the Hatha Yoga particularly today, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Tell us how far back you were able to trace this yoga uh, in our uh, ancient history. <laughs> See, uh, the hard evidences are there in Indus Saraswati civilization. Mm -hmm. So, um, Indus Saraswati civilization, the, you must have seen that particular sh seal of uh, Pashupati Shiv. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that see seal says uh, many things about yoga. First of all, that posture of uh, Pashupati yeah. is very important. That posture is now uh, through sco uh, scholars and through various yogic masters, we have established in the film that posture is a particular Bhadrasan. Mm -hmm. And there is a continuity of the, that Bhadrasan in our tradition that is a different story and we have traced that continuity. But that Bhadrasan was a standard and uh, for meditation right. and it is a very difficult asan, difficult hat yogic asan. Mm -hmm. Rather I would say that this is one of the four most prominent asans of Hatha Yoga. I see. So, and this Bhadrasan, in this Bhadrasan, the Pashupati is surrounded by five uh, animals. And very interestingly, uh, one scholar, uh, as she said, that we consulted yeah. archaeological sites and archaeologists and uh, yeah. traditional scholars, uh, professors. So, one scholar uh, states that uh, he mentioned, he pinpointed one Rigvedic mantra where the Pasupati is surrounded by all exactly yeah. these animals yeah. and sitting in uh, again in yogic posture. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is one more connection in later Hatha Yogic, uh, you know, the Upanishads, Yogic mm -hmm. Upanishads, there is a whole uh, series of Yogic Upanishads in which this process of Bhut Shuddhi is described. Mm -hmm. And in these Bhut Shuddhi, Bhut Shuddhi is a uh, process of purifying the uh, elements, I see, yeah. elements like fire, earth, mm -hmm. water, Prithvi Jalagni Vayu Akash, yeah. we, it is known like this. So, in that process, the yogi goes through uh, and these five uh, animals symbolizes those uh, basically five elements. Nice. Th this is one connection and one more connection is there and that is that the, you know, uh, the uh, concept of uh, Mar. So, when yogi reaches to the final stage, just at the critical moment, there are obstacles. I see. You must have seen in the life of Buddha, when just for yeah. enlightenment, Mar attacks him. Hmm. Mar. Yeah. So, attack of Mar. And these uh, Pashus, these uh, yeah. animals, they are the symbol of Mar I and see. it has been written in the Yajurved. Uh, 
that uh, um, uh, this mar this tra tradition of mar is not only limited to the buddhism it was there before that also so okay. there are interesting yeah. uh, things fascinating yeah. mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen you are watching a triple n talk show which is coming to you on youtube and also google plus uh, we are talking about the history of uh, yoga and my special guests are ramji om and dipika kuthari uh, they are here in houston uh, promoting their uh, internationally acclaimed uh, history of yoga documentary and let's give out your contact information uh, before we go further <laughs> okay uh, we are based in Mumbai. Our website is uh, www.vishuddhifilms.com. Vishuddhi is this chakra. Vishuddhifilms.com. Spelling. Uh, V-I-S-H-U-D-D-H-I-F-I-L-M-S.com. So this is our website and a uh, lot of information is there. We are based in Mumbai. Yes. Okay. Uh, Deepika, maybe you can tell us... Uh, 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 I, I'm sure you've done a lot of research. Uh, how many years did it take to produce uh, this uh, movie? <laughs> uh, well, uh, we did uh, many, many years of research. It's uh, an ongoing process. But uh, this particular film took about six years to complete. Six years. Because we traveled to about 140 archaeological sites across India. We consulted uh, 37 museums and uh, very many libraries for manuscripts. And we also uh, uh, visited. Uh, scholars. Yeah, yeah, we did uh, mm, yeah. Ha had consulted about thirty eminent scholars of various fields, like hist historians and art Arts. historians and philosophy people, people of literature and ancient texts, and uh, medical doctors, and also uh, people from fine arts, from uh, other sadhaks, literature, and these are the Sanskrit people, archaeologists. Uh, these are the people who were consulted. So it yes, was this is fascinating, and uh, I had the pleasure of interviewing uh, Cynthia Lucas, who has done a documentary on Mahatma Gandhi, yeah. oh. which is going to be shown uh, in a couple of months here in Houston. Wonderful. And I was asking her, you know, like a typical Hollywood or a Bollywood movie has a screenplay already written, all the archi the architectural map is already laid out, yeah. and then oh. you go and you just execute what's on the script yeah. how, how does your uh, documentaries evolve i mean do you have a script or is it just you collect the information and then you write the script <laughs> yeah you know we both of us did the research part and um, but after that you need to have a storyline in documentary also it is yeah. very important <laughs> but the thing is that uh, the things keep on changing because it is also a learning process. Yes, you know, uh, anyone cannot claim that I know the uh, everything. Yoga has a 6,000 years history, huge literature, huge scholarly wo works are there, huge amount of work is there. So, uh, traditions, uh, are there. traditions are there. Doctrines. So, uh, and it is a huge country. It is spread That's through the yeah. entire subcontinent. So, when you visit actually the, the sites, you also get new ideas new uh, enlightenment about the <laughs> information, <laughs> bombardment of information. Yeah. So, this takes time and we kept on revising few things, but the storyline was same uh, that we were determined to end it, uh, start it with the Patanjali mm -hmm. by intro introducing the basic concept of yoga, yeah. then only you can absorb the story. So, there, from there we went down to Indus civilization yeah. and then to Vedic, then to Upanishad, then to uh, Buddhism, Jainism and later uh, Buddhism and things like that. Then Hatha Yogis and then Tantrics, then um, even the we have also involved the uh, Sufism. Yeah. Sufis also um, uh, adopted few Hatha Yogic techniques of meditation. So, things like that. We, we had this, this broad structure in mind. That's yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, let me ask yeah. you this. Uh, when you were doing the research, did you find references to uh, yoga, and especially Hatha Yoga in Ramayana or Mahabharat? <laughs> Mahabharat, yes. yes. Yeah. Mahabharat is a biggest encyclopedia on yeah. Indian <laughs> spirituality. <laughs> and I must say it is the biggest encyclopedia on uh, Indian civilization, yeah. <laughs> basically, mm -hmm. as far as the purpose of life is concerned. 
so there are not only in uh, ramayana and mahabharata of course there are um, um, references but you know these references are there in rigveda also i know hatha yogi <laughs> yeah. the case in munis yeah. reference of case in munis it it is totally you know resembles with the uh, the look of uh, yeah. hatha yogi so there are many sects in um, um, in mahabharat in ramayan in bhagavad yeah. puran there true. are many sects but uh, it hmm. interestingly um, when we met uh, uh, yogacharya ayangar mm -hmm. uh, uh, just before he left his body so he told us that uh, yoga was a household name yeah. in india in ancient times and whenever they used to sit and uh, for to perform yeah. yagya mm -hmm. they had to uh, undergo a process of uh, uh purification of the yeah. breath and also asana. sit in yeah. a particular asan so asan pranayam and certain uh ways of life uh, that are governed by yama and niyam yeah. yeah. were very much part of life in the ancient indian That's times yeah. Yeah. so it was very actually much, yeah. before any yeah. ritual uh, the priest says asana pranabhya pranayama bhya yeah. so this word is there <laughs> that is true no, yeah. because when, when i reviewed bhagavad gita when yeah. krishna is talking to arjuna on the yeah. battlefield yeah. you know he explains all these things you know mm -hmm. like uh, dharma yoga karma yoga and uh, his duty and his obligations uh, all these things uh, yeah. and especially i'm sure when they were trained by all these uh, rishis about their uh, archery and all is they must yeah. have followed hmm. very strict uh, very, very hatha yes. yoga yeah, yeah. in order to yes. master yeah, the yeah. master the hmm. absolutely well. yes yeah. ladies and gentlemen you are watching the triple n talk show i am dr nick nikam and my special guests are ram ji om and dipika kothari they are here in houston promoting their internationally acclaimed documentary history of yoga okay let's talk about uh, what is the most interesting thing that you discovered in your uh, a uh, journey and in your research wow uh, <laughs> there are so many things uh, <laughs> the most important thing is that our perspective completely changed to look uh, about india indian civilization its philosophy and uh, who we are as uh, indians i can say so this was uh, something which found a new meaning altogether apart from that uh, there were very many things like for example uh, when we visited many sites across india uh, we were looking we thought that we would see a beautiful temple or beautiful sculptures uh, and uh, we would go and you know uh, pay our obeisances <laughs> to the deity and all but to our surprise uh, we found that all these places were destroyed mutilated uh, idols and all mm. and this really uh, hurt us deeply yeah. <laughs> and uh, we were really thinking mm. that a great amount of knowledge and uh, wisdom is which was encapsulated in these idols their facial expressions uh, which was initially realized by those who created that That's true. those people must have had those impressions within themselves and then they created in the in the art so those beautiful things are lost forever and we will never get to see because mm. times have changed and all that knowledge is gone from us yeah. and the beautiful like we visited nalanda and very many mm. such, such places you just see ruins nothing else and you see all is gone yeah. so that really changed <laughs> yeah, yeah just see yeah. i will just add one thing that i was the cameraman also I for see. this film so when i used to look through the piece i uh, of camera you know throughout day we used to sh uh, um, shoot and in the evening you know uh, those images were there were few uh, you know intact images also yeah. expressions so i used to capture them sh you know i used to frame a shot and i used to look for longer times but in the evening or maybe on the next day those images and in the in the in the my deep you know sleep also those images used to remain for longer longer I time see, yeah. and i used to feel a deep calm and you know deep yes, um, that's fascinating <laughs> so approximately how many locations did you all visit <laughs> I think hundred and more than hundred and forty locations, <laughs> and some locations more than once, I because uh, 
as you suppose you visit <laughs> Kajraho temple, it's a huge complex with <laughs> about 25 uh, yeah. such temples across, uh, spread across a, a large area. And every, every temple or every site uh, gives a, uh, a whole lot of uh, tradition, history, yeah. heritage, everything. So, <laughs> so very many sites. But many are left because uh, we recently visited Southeast Asia and that part is not included in the film. Uh, but that is also uh, very much part of this pan-Indian phenomena. So very That's unique. fascinating. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching the Triple N talk show. We are talking about uh, the history of uh, yoga. And my special guest from Mumbai, India, I used to call Bombay because that's <laughs> what it was when I left in, in the 70s. <laughs> yeah. But uh, all my young generation <laughs> <laughs> now people try to correct me. Uh, anyway, so my special guests are Ramji Om and Deepika Kothari. They are here promoting their history of yoga documentary. Okay, uh, Ramji, maybe you can tell us what are different types of yoga? I'm, I'm just talking about the Hatha Yoga. <laughs> Okay, so th nowadays, of course, there are many yoga masters yeah. and they have developed their own style of yoga. Yeah. So, and there is no harm in it as far because in Hatha Yogic time, in medieval time also, these gurus used to develop their own style of, that is what is the uh, Indian tradition is all, all about, that you have always have a creative space. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but they always used to refer to Patanjali's yoga darshan, mm -hmm. yeah, they uh, it's like getting certification from Patanjali. <laughs> so they used to start with uh, you know that this our yoga, like the medieval yeah. Hatha yogic text, they will start um, by stating that our yoga is actually meant for Raj yoga. I see. Which is Raj yoga means the best yoga. Yeah, I see. <laughs> king of yoga, king, which yes. is Patanjali's yoga. Yeah. And many scholars say that no, no, this is just a lip service to Raj yoga, <laughs> but they are propagating this physical type of yoga. Mm. But I think it is not true. In their core of uh, you know philosophy, you will always find Raj yoga, yeah. which is the um, yoga based on meditation and samadhi basically uh, it takes you at the higher planes and it creates atmosphere a, a lifestyle which which will uh, you know which will make your uh, journey easy like they will talk about yam and niyam mm -hmm. eh, this raj yoga will start with yam and niyam stating and yam so there are actually traditionally we can find four or five type of yoga always in our tradition like one which uh, the emphasis is more on uh, knowledge, I see. knowledge about nature, knowledge about self. So, self-realization through knowledge will, it is a discipline called Jnana Yoga, yeah. Jnana Yoga. And uh, as I described, the Raja Yoga is what Patanjali basically teaches. And there is one more yoga which is Kriya Yoga in Patanjali's yeah. Yoga Darshan. So, the, he defines it uh, like Tapaswadhyaya, Ishwar Pranadhana and Kriya Yoga. But, this Raj Yoga, Jnana Yoga and one is Hat Yoga, Hat Yoga, yeah. yoga basically. Yeah. Yeah, the Kundalini is at the core of this Yoga, He or Tha means Chandra and Shurya. I see, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 this, these two, two poles gets united, yeah. the two for pran, Pranic Nadis, you have to you know balance it. So, Hat Yoga and uh, this Raj Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Hat Yoga. And of course, Karam Yoga I see, yeah. and Bhakti yeah. Yoga basically. Yeah. Bhakti Yoga is very important in our traditions because there were yogic elements in devotional meditation. In yeah. fact, all mm. of these are mentioned by Arj um, Sri Lord Krishna yeah. in, in the Bhagavad Gita shlokas. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's seven shlokas. Every one of these are yeah, mentioned. Yeah. That's yeah. supposed to be, I don't know, five, ten thousand years. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very important text as far as yoga is concerned because the beauty of Bhagavad Gita is that, uh, yeah, of course, it is a result of asking questions. Yeah. Arjuna is asking questions. <laughs> so, Krishna is giving him all right. type of options. That's right. That is <laughs> and at the end, he says <laughs> that I have, you know, <laughs> told, told you whatever I had. Um, now, you act as per your um, yes, wisdom. Yeah. But, uh, you know, this, this uh, whosoever has compiled this text, 
whether Vedavyas or uh, his his uh, other disciples, yeah. they have never, uh, you know, ev there is a thread yeah. in 700 uh, thread going on, which yeah. is yoga. Every yeah. chapter ends with uh, the uh, name yoga, I like yeah. Sankhya Yoga, Diti Yoga, yeah. yeah, and Karma um, the philosophy of yoga, which is Sankhya. It has been narrated very well. Somewhere, yeah. you know, uh, like chapter 13, shlok 19, 20, 21. Mm -hmm. the, the exact philosophy is also described. I see. Yeah. yeah, exact philosophy <laughs> of uh, Sankhya is described. Yeah. And in sixth chapter, you, of course, you will find the method, method technique yeah. of yoga. That's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching Triple N Talk Show. We are talking about the history of yoga. My special guests are. Uh, Ramji Om and Deepika Kothari, they are from Mumbai, they are promoting their documentary History of Yoga here in Houston. You know, being a doctor, I, I know no matter how well we want to preserve our physical body, eventually it will wear off. Does yoga have a much higher purpose uh, uh, for those who are practicing? Yeah. It is. <laughs> you, you would like to answer? Okay, you yeah. do. Yeah. So uh, maybe you can, yes, then I will add. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, see, by uh, practicing the hatha yogic uh, asanas, pranayams, and a bit of meditation, it helps in tuning up the body, basically. Yes. Uh, because for any higher yoga or any higher planes you want to achieve, you need to have a very uh, uh, centered body. And uh, you must also be without any disease and all this. So, the Hatha Yoga is all for that. So like the foundation for the Very much the yeah. foundation. Yeah, but there is, a, there was a rather larger purpose of yoga, which was to attain knowledge about consciousness and inert. So, for common men, yes, it is all for good health <laughs> and uh, a little bit of meditation to keep the mind uh, calm and yeah. concentrated. But for those who really want to attain higher knowledge, which would mean uh, knowledge about the universe, the connectivity, and uh, also about uh, the inert and the consciousness, yogic technique was used in the ancient times very powerfully. And uh, this technique was used to even uh, find out scientific uh, things. Scientific uh, uh, achievements were also based on it. Uh, you can also say about Ayurveda or body science or st science of stars, the movement hmm. and uh, even very many things. But uh, they did use some tools and techniques, but the base of that was yogic uh, yeah. technique. So and, this is very interesting. Uh, and I would yeah. like to add something to you, yeah. that there are basically two, three purposes of yoga. Hmm. So at uh, physical level, you can say that, you know, death is inevitable. Yeah. The old age is also inevitable. Hmm. So, uh, by you know practicing it, uh, the aging becomes more graceful, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you handle these things in a better manner, and also, you have better control sorry, over your body. Sorry. Also, in yeah. medicine, you know, the, the, the big key word is quality of life. Mm -hmm. Quality of life, and, yes, and that yes. that also has a significant yeah, yeah. Uh, positive impact from yes, doing yes. this yoga. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> and there are uh, studies uh, which suggest that uh, you can add few years That's in your life. Longevity. <laughs> of course, uh, th there are other uh, exercise methods by which the same thing can happen. <laughs> can happen, but you know uh, when our our findings in the ancient history or ancient text is that uh, there are two things as per yogic philosophy. Mm. One is body, and one is the conscious. Yeah. So conscious entity is entangled in the inert body. So, inert body is perishable, that is what the philosophy That's says. A, yeah. So, you have to in, uh, disentangle, disentangle your conscious entity before it becomes too old to be thrown away. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is there of course, see, yeah. it is a matter of lot of investigation and uh, lot of studies, scientific studies are going on. But um, this uh, is the okay, concept. Let's give yeah. out your contact information and then we'll continue with the, the conversation. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we are Mumbai based and uh, you can get to, to us by writing to us uh, at uh, www.vishuddhifilms.com. Uh, Vishuddhifilms, double D H I F I L M S. Vishuddhifilms.com. 
Okay, how many people were involved uh, in, in the production of this uh, documentary? <laughs> Uh, the team was very small, I yeah. can say. I uh, would say that uh, on two, three occasions, team become like 30 people going to Elephanta Caves, which you see <laughs> in the film. But uh, then we decided to keep it because th there was, you know, for one shot, we had to visit to Gorkha district of Nepal. Mm -hmm. And then so many, you know, um, transportation systems and very, it is a very high altitude. So, we kept our team. Average, I think, was for five, six persons. Yeah, and at a time. Mm -hmm. But, of course, we had those uh, docudramas and things like that where yeah. it was a large team. And we filmed a drama also. Yeah. Because for Upanishadic period of time, uh, we did not have any visuals, much visuals. Mm -hmm. So, for that, we had to create a, um, you know some kind of mm -hmm. lifestyle visuals. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, you, you had at least 30 people, you know, and then in media, it's been like a one man show for the last two and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> but surprisingly, we have been able to, you know, get almost 1000 subscribers and almost a third of them were from India, actually. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, uh, let's talk about uh, what is something new that you discovered that you didn't know? <laughs> oh. There are many <laughs> things. <laughs> we still don't know many things. <laughs> yeah, every day. Uh, yeah. There is something new that is revealed. Uh, first and the foremost is that uh, as a city uh, uh, grown uh, person, yeah. I also thought yoga is doing uh, asans and pranayams and all that uh, till I found uh, the writings of Patanjali Yoga Sutra. Mm, and if you read the text in original, then you get to know much more. But Indians, uh, if you really want to understand yoga, then one has to also understand a uh, lot many other literatures that are written in their original form and also the right context in which they are written. Most of the time, mm, people forget the right context and when you forget the right context, you misinterpret things. Mm -hmm. So, when we uh, read all these things or when we journeyed through these places, uh, we are now understand why the eyes are like this, why the hands and <laughs> yeah, postures yeah, are yeah, like yeah. this, what it means uh, when, the, when somebody is holding some object, uh, what it connotes in Indian wisdom. So it's a whole lot of thing that are revealed yeah. every day mm -hmm. as we So I guess on. every action and every position mm -hmm. yeah. had, had some meaning and, yeah. and a purpose. Purpose, yeah, purpose. Yeah. And you know, while interviewing these great scholars, we learned yeah. a lot. <laughs> they were like an encyclopedia in themselves. Like yeah. we were interviewing Professor S. R. Rao who excavated Dwarka, yeah. city of yeah. Dwarka yeah. and yeah. Lothal. Yeah. So that was a whole lot of a learning, you know, yeah. enlightening moment for interaction for us. So yeah. this way we met uh, these great uh, scholars hmm. and yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, let's talk about your history of yoga uh, documentary and what can people expect to see? when they watch this uh, documentary? <laughs> um, I think uh, you will get to see India as a whole as it stands today. Uh, from the ancient perspective, the beautiful sculptures spread across India, the philosophy of yoga, uh, which is uh, almost lost and not understood rightly in the West. Mm. So that's an important thing. Uh, not even in the West, but even in India, people are uh, not in touch with the, what it, the message it, it carries, uh, plus the beautiful uh, heritage, traditions. Uh, we have very many uh, live uh, uh, traditions that we have shown uh, in the film also, just a glimpse of it. It goes in quick clips, no I doubt, see, yeah. uh, because 6,000 years, how can we <laughs> yeah, I mean, show yeah. in 100 minutes? So it was a real Herculean <laughs> task for us yeah. also. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, it's, I can say it's a curtain raiser about history and philosophy of yoga. That's fascinating. There's much to do. Yeah. Uh, just out of curiosity, what was the oldest scripture you saw and in what language was it? <laughs> and uh, what was I the more Rigveda? recent one which we could interpret? Like it. <laughs> uh, we, like uh, <laughs> these, the oldest that we found was uh, one was the Rig Ved. Yeah. Uh, and it was uh, amazing to, to see, see and uh, it was uh, uh, on those barks of tree mm. 
and uh, the li- other thing was uh, the one of the old forms of uh, mahabharat that we saw and uh, then there was uh, those scriptures of uh, ayurveda uh, in the south yeah. uh, mm. written in old uh, tamil language <laughs> again mm-hmm. that was uh, I thing yeah. but and rigved one, was yeah rigved yeah. was just a in the old mesmerizing you know yeah. object in front of us it was really difficult to get access of that d- particular piece do you know what language they were in they were in um, o- o- uh, sanskrit no the script was uh, some Brahmi. sarda kashmiri sarda i see okay. yeah yeah it, the, the manuscript was i think from originally from kashmir part yeah it was a sarda lipi script yeah and sanskrit Old of course sanskrit. All this yeah, Veda yeah. is written Vedic, in Vedic, Vedic, Vedic Sanskrit. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, you have a website. So tell us about uh, what people can find on your website. <laughs> uh, on the website, you can uh, find about ourselves and then the mm-hmm. film that we have made, a bit of literature and the future things, pl- uh, projects that we are uh, going yeah. to do, and also a lecture that we are also giving in this tour uh, of America and Canada. Uh, in which we discuss about yoga and indian civilization in a very large prospect and uh, this is basically a second uh, more extended work of the I one see, that yeah. we have already done so it's about all that so that okay tell us about y- your first project which was the indian civilization uh, just give us an overview of uh, what uh, you all did with that first project, project was not this, indian this first this was that um, uh, you know folk song based on a small documentary yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah we we did some small documentary things uh, um, but this uh, history of yoga the path of my ancestor this film was the major project that we took and uh, we have about 200 hours of footage with us yeah. unused <laughs> which we want to use it in future very I much yeah. and uh, then uh, the second project that we are going to do is on uh, indian civilization so uh, see, it yeah. will be a whole a hmm. uh, lot of traditions doctrines and very yeah. many things all compiled so how it is. survived because I, this oh, is yeah. the only true surviving civilization oh, no, so see. our emphasis will be how it survived throughout yeah. these you know brutal marauding invasions how indian civilization survived and, and it, it is still a living civilization <laughs> ladies and gentlemen yeah. uh, you are watching a triple and talk show coming to you on youtube and also google plus uh, please do subscribe to our youtube channel and google plus and also we have a social media facebook on facebook page which is nick nickam network and we would uh, like you to like our page uh, so we keep you abreast of uh, what's happening in and around the houston area and from around the world uh, today we have been talking about the history of uh, yoga my special guests are ramji and deepika kothari they are here from bombay promoting their internationally acclaimed uh, history of uh, yoga documentary okay let's talk about uh, uh first give out your contact information and then we'll talk about uh, your showing of uh, documentary here in Houston <laughs> okay uh this is uh, our website uh, www.vishuddhifilms.com v i s h u d h i f i l m s.com so uh, vishuddhifilms.com is the website where you can find our contacts and all and uh, Houston, Houston. Okay, show. let's talk <laughs> about uh, your visit to Houston and uh, you know where this uh, uh, documentary is going to be uh, uh, shown. Uh, actually, this tour we started on the 9th of March from yeah. MIT. Uh, we are visiting uh, United States, uh, screening this documentary and the lecture tour in different universities and organizations. So uh, we have now reached Houston <laughs> before we travel to West Coast and then to Canada. Uh, who's in Houston? It is at uh, Keshav Srishti tomorrow yeah. evening at six uh, o'clock, and then we have another uh, on Sunday morning at Woodlands Temple. I see. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the name, Woodlands Temple. If, uh, so uh, they're around uh, at ten thirty in the morning, and then we move on to San Antonio. Fascinating. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have been talking about the history of yoga. My special guests we have been uh, Ramji Om and Deepika uh, Kothari, and they are going to be sh- showcasing their documentary at uh, Keshav Smriti uh, at six. Uh, is it six p.m.? Six p.m. Six p.m. Uh, in Houston, and uh, it's 
Woodlands Woodlands, Woodlands Temple Woodlands Temple, Temple. Temple uh, on Sunday. <laughs> okay, thank you very much thank you. for thank coming. You so it's been a pleasure talking to you. Yes. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back next time. Thank you so much for watching.